Empowered. Okay, hi, welcome back to another episode of the Empowered Podcast. Today I'm going to be doing a solo podcast and I'm going to be putting a bit of a focus on doing a few more solo podcasts over the coming weeks and months. A chance to reflect on some of the guests that I've had in, some of the lessons that I've learned. But also I think, you know, I'm spending a lot of time talking to other people, talking about their business, talking about what they're up to. And it's all so giving me a chance to reflect on our business journey and what we're doing. Sometimes I feel like I'm so deeply embedded in the business that I'm always trying to find time outside of that to work on the business, that I'm not really getting a chance to document the things that we're actually doing. Um, and I'm not being able to put that much effort into my own social media and my own platforms to get our message across, which, you know, working on the business and working extremely hard on the things that we're doing and trying to spend time working on the business as well is, um, you know, it's really beneficial and I can really feel like I'm moving the needle and the team are doing a really good job of getting us to where we want to get to. But I also know the value in other people um, engaging in what we're doing, being part of the journey, the value that people might get from seeing what we're up to, and then also the opportunities that come off the back of it. Some of the biggest opportunities that I've had in the past 12 months are a result of people seeing what I've been speaking about, reaching out to me and creating that um synergy which maybe if I wasn't being so vocal about what we were up to wouldn't have existed so it can be really difficult especially with what we do which I'm going to get into a little bit talk about what it is that we do um in the business because I, I feel like it's something that I haven't really spoken about before and it's going to set this the tone for me documenting the business as we go um I want to be really transparent with it I want to talk about the pros and the cons um I want to talk about some of the struggles and the challenges that we're going through at the moment because it'll be good to reflect on these sort of videos 12 months down the line, 24 months down the line. And I wish I had some videos to reflect on from 12 months ago to let me know that I'm kind of on the right path. So creating content for a business like what we're doing is, you know, it's quite difficult. Um, we're, we've got a, a new strategy for creating content moving forward for the actual business from a business to consumer perspective. So, um, you know, as FitPro X, which is one of our, one of the businesses within what we're doing, it's essentially a business that teaches people how to become personal trainers. And it does that using um, partnerships. So we partner up with busy personal trainers, gyms, people who are in the fitness industry to deliver really top-notch fitness education to people who are looking to get into that industry. So, um, you know, creating content for that has been a bit of a journey. We're slowly starting to increase our engagement levels at the moment. We, you know, we've really started putting more focus on putting content out there, which is going to engage people who are interested in becoming personal trainers and also engage people who are already in the industry to join our network of qualified personal trainers who will act as mentors on the course. So um, that's a part of the business. Um, the other part of the business, Empowered, is the education software side of things. So we build courses essentially. So we'll work with private training providers, education companies, people who want to add an education arm to the business that they already do to create the software solutions for that business. So that's the actual platform that the course will be delivered on, as well as the content that will help the students learn what it is that they need to learn in order to complete the course. So you can see how those businesses are entwined and how they work together. So, you know, we've got the actual platform, which FitPro X is hosted by and all of the content that's for the students to learn is all built by Empowered. So that's the way that those two businesses kind of work with each other. But they're two very separate businesses that have two different teams and have two different goals. Empowered is completely business to business, whereas FitPro X is business to business slash business to consumer because we're going into other fitness professionals to help them build a business around education. But then also we're going straight to consumers, i.e. people who want to become fitness professionals. So, 
you know, there are challenges to it. Um, I think we're having the most success that we've had um, in these recent two months. Um, and it's all been down to building the network. So we've got an amazing network growing of personal trainers, gyms, fitness professionals who are all part of uh, the FitProX community. It's their responsibility to promote the fact that they're going to be mentoring students. Um, and it wouldn't be possible without the FitProX um, learning platform powered by Empowered because they have somewhere for the actual students to get all of their theoretical um, work. And honestly, I, I see this being so much bigger than what it is right now. This is us proving that it actually works. And then we're going to, you know, take all of the learnings that we have as a business from this and implement it across a multitude of different um, industries and show that the way that people want to learn in 2023 is very different to the way that people wanted to learn prior to now. COVID changed the landscape of learning massively by showing people that, you know, they can learn from home. They don't have to go into a college or a university or a training establishment in person to get the same amount of value in terms of learning. Um, you know, people are far more independent when it comes to their studies. And people are also starting to realize that they can learn the things that they want to learn and need to learn in order to do a job and not necessarily a whole syllabus which has been put in front of them, which they're required to get a qualification at the end. Obviously, industries like the fitness industry, which we work in, are accredited industries. So in order to get your insurance, you need to have a certificate. But the other industries that we're working with, a lot of them aren't. You know, you've got businesses that you don't actually need a qualification in order to do the job. Um, and people are finding actually, rather than doing a, a qualification which is um, linked to an awarding body and is certified that they can actually just go and learn from somebody who's in that industry um, and they can just tell them what it is that they need to do in order to do the job. And I think that's something that we're trying to home in on and make our business model, learning from the people who are actually in the industry right now doing the job, they're not retired from the industry or they haven't come back to get into education because their career in that industry is over. They are actually people who are right now doing the thing that the students want to be doing with their life and with their work. And I think that's a really interesting way of learning. You know, you'd like to learn from somebody who has the most up-to-date knowledge because they're actually doing something every day because there are so many intricacies to different jobs that people, you know, there is a lot of nuance to a job once you get into it. It's kind of like learning to drive. You almost pass your test with your instructor and then when you're in that car by yourself, you're doing the real learning because you're figuring things out for yourself. You don't have someone there holding your hand anymore. And most careers are like that. You actually find out what the career is all about once you qualify and once you're in the industry. And what we don't want to do is people's first real introduction to what the what the industry is really about and was really like being once they've finished their course and now they're in there and they're expected to perform. We want them to get a good insight from their mentor prior to getting into the industry because also it'll allow them to, you know, go around, uh, go about things the right way. They can they know what the things are that are going to be important. They know what the things are that are going to make them money. They know what the things are that are going to be useful to them and that they should pay extra close attention to when they're doing their studying. And they also know the things that are going to be a little bit irrelevant when they qualify. You know, there's some things on courses which just don't translate over to the job that you want to do. Or that's not necessarily to say that they wouldn't translate over to any job, but they just, for the area of the industry that you might want to go into specifically, something might be quite irrelevant. So your mentor can almost be like, you know, don't worry about that too much. It's not going to be something that's going to come up too much. This, which doesn't really seem that important, you're going to do that every day. And if you can get really good at that, you can excel in whatever you're doing. So I think that gives a bit of an insight into kind of what we're doing. Um, you know, our goal is to have mentors in all of England pushing out these courses and then 
you know, looking to see how we can expand internationally with mentors around the globe who will act as um, ambassadors for the brand, but also be able to build a business in their, of their own using our platform, using the access to our learning materials, using the access to all of the things that we provide and all of the systems and things that we've put in place to make embedding a learning element to your business as streamlined and easy as possible and allow people to just get into the interesting bit of it, which is just teaching people what it is that you know and giving people the insight that would really help them become successful in the industry, which is, I think, the reason most people want to get into teaching. So, you know, we're really excited to be doing that. We're working with some great partners. We're working with some great education companies. We're building some awesome content around different courses as well, you know, creating a product ecosystem, which is something that is very important to me, having different offerings so that once you get a learner that they are a learner for life and not just for that one course you know you want to be able to constantly be giving them continued professional development giving them pathways to success once you've got somebody in and they understand what you're doing and they're bought into it there should always be a next step a next progression for their learning and we're trying to create something which really embodies that and helps them to grow with us as a business we'll support them in turn, they're giving us feedback, which is going to support us. And we can create this really good um, alumni situation where they will also potentially go on to be mentors. You know, the majority of the mentors we have on our course are alumni. So they advocate for our product because they've used it to get their qualification and in turn start facilitating their success. So they're kind of giving that back to us now. Building that network and building those communities around what we're doing is so vital to me and the organization. And it's something that I really want to document as we're going, because I really think that it's the key to success is the strength of the communities that you've built. I've done it on a small scale with gyms and my personal training business back in the day. And I really feel like I can apply that with the right team, which I believe that we're building to the wider audience and getting something that's you know, national company, which we are now, you know, we've got students all over England and really focused on expanding this internationally as well, because I think that using this model, the sky's the limit because it's just who can we reach, which mentors can we get in touch with? We're borrowing credibility because we're piggybacking on the individual fitness professionals credibility. So we're not having to go into these different places and establish ourselves um, in each place because we're going to work with established people already. So I just want to document it, show how we're getting on with it. Um, I think it's the best way to go forward from where we're at with, you know, requiring low capital input, which is obviously important for a startup. Um, but yeah, I just want to be really transparent. I'm going to be doing um, Q and A's as part of these videos that I do. Um, I'm going to be you know, putting it out to us, to my social medias to try and get some feedback on what it is that people really want to know about running a business. Um, I'm going to start with, you know, some of the, some of the misconceptions that maybe I had or other people definitely have when it comes to running a business or getting into any industry really. Um, so, you know, I work with a lot of personal trainers. I work with a lot of people who are in the industry and I work with a lot of people who are getting into the industry and, you know, at its core, personal training is just a service-based business. You are trading your time, knowledge, expertise um, for money with your client, either on a, a one-to-few, a one-to-one, or a one-to-many scale. You know, there's a thousand different ways to be a fitness professional now. It's a really exciting industry because there's a lot of ways to really leverage the time that you have. Um, but the only way to do that is to really understand the sort of industry that it is. And, you know, most businesses fall into this category for what it is. And it's predominantly going to be sales driven. I think one of the biggest misconceptions people have is that they don't think that they'll have to sell that much. They think that A, the product will sell itself or B, um, you know, they won't really need to push it onto people because 
you know, as soon as they build, you know, build it and they'll come, as they, they used to say. So, you know, you put a sign up outside and all of a sudden you've got a queue. And realistically, from day one, you're going to be selling. And that's not even necessarily hard selling individuals who want to buy your product or, you know, be part of your community. That can be selling your ethos and your... um the way that you're going to do things to potential staff members who are going to come on board. You know, you need to sell to them that it's a good idea for them to spend their time working with or for you. You're going to have to sell your ideology to clients and people that you work with. You're going to have to sell to them that they need to be doing X, Y, and Z to achieve their goals. And if they don't believe you or if you're not very good at selling that or if you're not very good at getting it across, they're just not going to follow your advice because you need to convince them that they should be doing this thing, which is probably going to be uncomfortable and hard. And that's not an easy sell to a lot of people. So selling throughout the business that you're in, selling at the point of getting customers, it's probably the most important thing. Now, it's not the most important thing that you know how to sell because it's just understanding that somebody is going to have to sell. So if you're really terrible at selling, if that is not you at all whatsoever, maybe you're more creative, maybe you have a more of a flair for marketing, you know, maybe you're good at catch, capturing people's attention, but when it comes to a sales situation, you just lack the confidence or the killer instinct to get the sale across the line. That's absolutely fine. And there's no problem with that. You can still be successful. And I believe that there are many, many people who are very successful who have zero ability to sell. However, those people will have something in common they have the ability to find somebody who can sell and bring them in very quickly because it's vital to the, to the success of any business that you have somebody invested in the business who has the ability to get those sales across the line, who has the organization to chase up on leads, who has the, um, the ability to stay active, to not feel you know, the pressure too much and let that get to their heads, to not feel like they're being too pushy, to just have all of those right ingredients in the right amounts to not feel, not have people feel like they're too pushy or like they're really trying to force a sale, but also to not let people who are wanting to be customers get away because you also have an ethical responsibility to sell. And I do believe that. I know sales gets a bit of a bad rep from people and, you know, people see it as a bit of a sleazy industry and in that it's, you know, you're making people buy shit that they don't want, but more likely you're getting people to commit to something that they wanted to commit to, but then just started telling themselves a bunch of stories as to why they shouldn't do that anymore, especially in the fitness industry. You know? If you're selling somebody to come and do personal training sessions, their quality of life is going to increase massively. They're going to lose weight, potentially you know, increase their life expectancy, reduce their chances of illness. They wanted to do those things. They reached out to you at a time that they were really motivated to do it. Other things came up. Their demons started kicking in again saying, you know, we don't need to do this. It's going to be too hard. Why now? Wouldn't you rather just go out? Wouldn't you rather just eat shit? Blah, blah, blah. You now have an ethical responsibility to help them carry through with the things that they wanted to do when they got in touch with you. You know, it's not a case of making them part with their money. It's making them... Uh, realize that this is an, an incredible investment. And in fact, if you're in any industry where you can package your product as an investment, like we do with education, you know, you don't spend money on education, you invest money in education, you do your personal training course for three grand, you start making five grand a month. That's not a cost. Cost is something that you spend, and you don't get any money back from, you know, it's, a, it's not a liability, you know, don't, don't mistake investments with liabilities, you invest in a course which is going to help you create more wealth, then it hasn't cost you anything, it's made you money. So, you know, you're asking people to um, invest in an appreciating asset, which is themselves, if they take themselves seriously, and if they commit to uh, the learnings that you give them, you know, you're, you're helping them improve their standard of life, you're, you're helping them improve on everything. So selling is probably the most vital bit. And thinking that it's something that you're not going to have to worry about is naive. And the quicker you get good at it, the better, because no matter what area of your life you apply selling to, it's going to be of benefit. So that's probably one of the, the things that I would say. 
And also, when it comes to that, I'll, I'll make these, you know, podcasts as true to life as I can. Because I think, you know, you're going to see people talk about sales and they're going to talk about, you know, if you watch The Wolf of Wall Street, you'll see those scenes where they're selling to people and it's all, they're happy. And this person's just, you know, signed up for, to put 20 grand in, they're going to make, you know, 10,000 pound commission and that person's done that and that person's done that. They are the, the 50th call where you get your yes. They will be showing those bits and that's absolutely fine to get. 10 no's in a row and then a yes is still a yes. But to get seven no's in a row and go, fuck this, it doesn't work. That is a no. You only lose when you give up. So one thing that you are going to see is tons and tons and tons and tons of no, not now. This isn't working. That's part of sales. A good salesperson, in fact, is a good prospector. When I'm calling someone to ask them about a course, I want to quickly cut to the chase I want to find out if they're eligible for the funding, first of all, because if they're not, it's a totally different conversation. This is just my industry. But I want to know if they're qualified. You know, how long have you been thinking about doing this? Why do you want to be a personal trainer? What is it about doing the course now that feels like the right time? These questions are ways of getting the time wasters out of the way because the quicker you can end a call with a no, the better. Last thing you want to do is get a no 10 minutes in 10 minutes in go, oh, well, actually I'm going on holiday for four months now. So it wouldn't be until February. I mean, that's fine. Oh, February, no worries. How about we schedule a call again in January? Boom, done. See you in January. Prospecting clients, getting those no's out of the way, but not being disheartened by them. You know, you're going to see people's wins and social media is going to post the wins. And that's what I don't really want to do because I don't feel like if I want this to be a personal journey that I can keep looking back on, I'm going to have to post about the things that didn't go to plan as well. So, you know, no, 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 no. But then if you just keep going, you are going to start getting those yeses. And in fact, the more yeses you get, the more yeses come. And that's statistically, it works out like that because you are priming yourself to be a better closer. The more yeses you get, the quicker you can start to turn, you know, people are going to come up with objections as to why it's not going to work. But, and at first you're going to stumble on those objections. You're going to be like, oh, um, um, I'm not sure sales gone, but after you're going to, someone's going to come up with an objection. You're going to think of a solution to that objection. You're going to write that solution down Next time that objection comes up, guess what? You've got the solution straight away at the top of your head. Boom, it's this. That could have been a lost sale. So as soon as those yeses start coming, they start coming more frequently because you just get better at getting past objections. So I know we spoke a lot there about sales, but you don't have business if you can't sell. The business ends at you not being able to sell or you not being able to find somebody who can sell. So getting good at it, getting quick, getting quick results, whether it's a yes or a no, is vital. And just getting yourself ready for that rejection. I've had thousands probably of rejections by now, Um, you know, on a daily basis. We probably get people saying, you know, they're not interested anymore or just ghosting us or not getting back to us. It's about quickly figuring out what the next steps are and, and moving on from there and going, okay, we get out of every 10 leads that we get in, one of them signs up for a course. We want to do hundred leads a month. What does that mean for us? Does that mean that we need to magically find a way to get it from every, out of every 10 leads, five people sign up. So let's get 200 leads and let's hope that we can get it to a point where we've got a 50% close rate. No, of course not. It's how do we get a thousand leads? That should be the first thing that we're thinking. Okay. How do we get a thousand leads? Cause then 10% of them we close. So it's it usually just comes down to a numbers game. And realistically, it's not that hard to find a thousand people who are interested in something if you've got the whole of a country as your, you, you know, your pool of people who would be potentially interested. So I think that's, you know, lesson one would be figuring out if sales is for you, if you're willing to find someone who's going to sell. Because if the answer to those two things is no, maybe it isn't for you. 
And I think that's another thing that people struggle with. You know, maybe it isn't for you. This isn't for everybody. You know, people, everybody, most people go home at five o'clock. Most of the guys go home at five or six or whenever. And, you know, that that's not the case for everybody. I know that I very rarely get away at that time. Um, but obviously it's something that I've signed up for. You know, it's, it's going to be a lot of, I got back from Bristol at two o'clock on the early hours of Saturday morning. I had to leave for London again. Sunday afternoon I got back from London Monday night at 11 o'clock I had to be in the office first thing in the morning to to get everything going that might not be for you and that's absolutely fine as well like but one thing that you're not going to get is results for the things that you didn't do so it's just about realizing what it is that's important to you and whether this is the right time to do it, because if this isn't the right time to do it, then that's also fine. I think there's a, it's a long journey. And the more time you spend doing something else as well, people will probably not talk about this very much. You know, there's always going to be ways to get ahead, to innovate, to work on things. You're probably never going to miss the boat on, on, I mean, you'll miss the boat on some things, but you'll never miss the boat on being successful because there's always new things that are coming. And if you're working in a company, you could just be sharpening your tools. You could just be working in a job sharpening your tools, do it to the best of your ability, don't half arse it, do it as if it is your own business, and then you'll just be getting better and better and better and better at whatever it is that you do. And then one day you might be like, right, I'm good enough now. The things have came into place, you know, I don't have X, Y, or Z, you know, I've, I've paid this off, I've paid that off, I've moved in with my boyfriend, so now my rent's half as much as it was. Um, my kids are in school now, so I don't have to work only three days a week and then boom, you're in the right position. You just pounce on it. So I don't think you should feel the rush to do anything as well. I think that maybe, um, you know, if I had my time again, I would have potentially went and worked somewhere first before I started my own business just to build up some skills in industry, build up some contacts because, you know, I've been doing this now for set up my first company just before I turned 21. Um, and now I'm just turned 29. So, you know, probably would have been nice to, to work for a business, but, Everyone's doing their own thing. Everyone's doing their own shit. I want to wrap that up because I think there's a few bits and pieces in there. I want questions from people because I want to answer them. I want to give people um, feedback on what we're up to. If people are interested in what we're doing, then, you know, I'm grateful for that. If people want to get involved in any way, shape or form, I'm, you know, I'm all ears and we're going to be creating a lot more content um, moving forward with some exciting things. We've got some FitPro X content on the horizon, which I'm really excited to get my teeth sunk into. So yeah, let's just do it. Let's fucking go.